Hey guys, so in this video we have with us a very old friend of mine. He's actually a school friend of mine who is studying in his fourth year of engineering at KIT. And despite KIT being a private college, he has done a number of research internships inside and outside of in India. In India, he's done his research internship in IIT Bombay. And outside of India, he has done it in many eminent universities under many renowned professors, including Georgia Tech, Emory University, and even Carnegie Mellon University, which is considered like one of the best research institutes in the world. So in this video, we're going to talk to him and understand what research internships are, how you can get into research, how you can prepare uh, prepare your CV, prepare your cover letters, how you can cold mail better professors so that you have a better conversion rate. And also we're going to talk about how you can land your first research internship. He's also going to share his research internship in, in India as well as abroad. And in this video, I'm sure that this is this is that one video you need to get your research internships right. So watch this video till the end and I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Hello, my name is Deepam. Uh... As he introduced, uh, I am currently in my fourth year of engineering and my major is in electronics and telecommunication. So, yeah, I mean, throughout the course of my undergraduate journey, I have developed an interest towards fields such as deep learning, computer vision, to say the least. So uh, I have done, as Nilan rightly pointed out, a couple of research internships from labs in and across India and out abroad. Uh, and I think we can, we'll probably have a discussion on the basis of right. same throughout the course of this podcast. Right, right. So let's just start with this one question that I have is why research internships and not corporate internships? Because uh, students in India, especially in India, like are much focused on getting into corporate, like getting high paying jobs. So what got you into research and not say into these corporate jobs? Right. I mean, that's, um, I think what you, you rightly pointed out how, how a lot of people are actually looking for jobs. Most, most people look for jobs when they enter or are in an engineering institute. Mm. But I mean, if you're, uh, going to do that, that's, that's all right. I mean, that's, there's no problem, but then again, if you are into research and if you re really like research and, if you are really, really, really interested in it, I think only then you should, you know, pursue it because otherwise it, it, it also can be a very bad experience, bad experience for you, uh, as it probably is a good experience for someone else. Yeah. So I think, I think you just have to have that kind of interest where up uh, an inclination towards, you know, finding things out, solving problems or, you know, doing solving a problem in a better way than, than it was previously before and stuff like that and obviously have a very defined territory of interest that that you want to probe further into so that's 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 why you should probably do a research internship some some of like probably the check boxes that one can you know refer to right. uh about corporate internships there's there's nothing you know like dividing these two spheres in my opinion mm -hmm. Because uh, at least I can speak for research. I mean, if you are into research and if you are probably getting a re you know further degree after your bachelor's in in, in research, uh, that is that is you know most likely you are eventually going to end up in corporate only because I mean this transition is seen more than of somebody the research we are uh, doing getting a R and D position in one of these corporates that you talk about. So yeah, the difference is I guess uh, if you are looking forward to enter corporate at a starting level with regards to what you are doing or probably in a software position or a more more technical position uh, that's that's your choice but then again if you are looking forward to do uh, you know some kind of research even in corporate or in academia then then this is probably an option okay and like what what got you into research if you could um see. i think oh. it was my second year when i first started looking into this so Honestly, I mean, the first, I think what got me into research is my, when I, when I first read my first research paper. So yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was pretty special. And I think these kind of experiences impact, you know, one, one another in, 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 in a very different way. I so hated I, it when I read my first research paper. 
<laughs> yeah, like, I, 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 right I know. Right away, knew that I did not want to do. That's that. the first thing. Yeah, it's it's so complicated. Why would you use language uh, like that? Like, can't you make sense? There are so many questions. I I get what you are saying, and throughout the course of your research journey, this will be a constant feeling as well. Hmm. But then the first research paper I read was the landmark paper of deep learning 2016 in my second year, and I. so i have always had this you know uh, thing of sort of trying to change the world in a, in a, in a little way even if even if it impacts like just one people or or like just a very small community so in that regard what i have always tried to do is i have always tried to create something which which actually contributes to that so i was during my second year phase i was lacking a bridge okay so i i wanted to be a part of society with regards to the kind of systems i want to build or the kind of engineering i want to apply to in my systems but i was lacking the tools i was lacking the expertise in this fluency i require in order to you know do you know do those things so i got into deep learning i i started seeing that you know like these are algorithms that exist these are algorithms that are actually going to be there in real time in the future for example we we all, all, all already see you know like aut- aut- autopilot cars of tesla already making the headlines yeah. of i think killing some people and you know stopping at every uh, stop sign it encounters you know, even on billboards so that's that's like some of the recent developments that have already started making the news so i i i particularly was interested into the healthcare sector and i was seeing that you know there are algorithms which were directly impacting you know things like detection rates now one thing i i think you would also agree to is in any country the number of doctors will always be lesser than the number of patients right, right. so so especially in, in in times of a pandemic it becomes very very difficult for more number of patients in a in a generic sense in order to be treated by these doctors and this is a problem we are living through right now literally mm-hmm. there are no doctors you know right if, you know ready to attend the patients which, which are in need right. so right. yeah what we like i i saw potential of these algorithms where we could build detection algorithms or segmentation algorithms which would help this doctor in faster diagnosis of the case particular case of the patient considering it's 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 computer vision based it's image based even even if it's not we we have speech uh, processing techniques as well in this sphere so all these cumulatively you know like showed me some kind of an assurance or prospect that that uh, led me to further pursue in this direction and you know one by one you know you like cross a few milestones and there are some steps that you have to learn mm. and yeah eventually you get there yeah i think we saw a live example of this like uh, using computer vision during this pandemic as well to detect for covid in ct scans of lungs i guess right. something like that something was been done if i am correct i don't know you might right. know i was working on a similar project actually yeah at iit one nice nice okay so let, so let's get on to that so uh, we we all know that it's very difficult to get uh, a research internships in india especially abroad and especially when you're from a private college and uh, not really those research oriented colleges like iits and nits are so how much difficult was it for you to get a research internship and also like how much does the college matter in this regard right i mean uh, so obviously like i am going to you know like say this answer with the perspective of the journey mm-hmm. that i have had mm-hmm. it might not directly apply to somebody else so fair warning um but yeah i mean it's 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 obviously an uphill battle when your university isn't as research oriented or probably doesn't you know probably in in your field specifically doesn't doesn't perform research at 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 that kind of a high level uh in order to be qualified for the topmost conferences that there are in our uh, you know research areas so these so top conferences are been targeted by these uh big big colleges like peer students from yeah, other colleges yeah. cannot get into so, so it, no, like no, it's it's it, no it's 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 not like that so you so uh, good question so 
for example, one of the top conference in my sphere, I'm sure you must have heard about it. It's CVPR, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Computer vision and pattern recognition, the uh, you know annual conference that happens every year. So the acceptance rate, I think, is around somewhat twenty percent. It's very less. So you and the submissions are also anonymized, right? So you the the reviewers do not know the institution to answer your question. Do not know the institutions okay. of the authors. And uh, simultaneously, you do not know about the reviewer's identity as well. That's what double blind process is. Now, basically, what happens is, uh, so it doesn't matter like where you are from, but 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 you see that there will be a directly proportional relationship to the kind of quality research yeah. that you can produce and also your submission. So it's mm -hmm. it's sort of corollary. So now that's that's the thing. So you have to be associated with a uh, I would say in this case, a good supervisor, a helpful supervisor who's going to help you walk the steps that you require in order to get, get to a place where you are able to conduct research on your own or like design the studies on your own. So that's basically it. So I'm, I'm still not there yet. I'm, I'm still like learning a lot in order to get there someday, but, um, I'm talking about the level where like you are able to just, you know, like from start to end conduct an entire study, which is going to be, again, be a discovery of sorts, um, all, all, all by yourself. So that's, that's, that's the idea. Okay. Got it. And if you could say like the acceptance rate of getting research internships in India, as well as abroad, like how many people, if, if say applies from your college, KIIT, uh, how many people do actually get these kind of internships? Like if they really try in India as well as abroad. Right. So I think it's, it's like subjective. I would say, I mean, it's, uh, so obviously like I, I'm not going to lie or like, I'm also not going to demotivate you, but, uh, the, the, like the rate of like the percentage of mails that you will be replied to is, is pretty less, or in my case, at least like has been very, very less. If like the give, ratio, if you could give a number, huh? like one out of yeah. I mean, I mean, for 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 hundred mils, you might get two replies or might not. That's <laughs> that's because because even I realize why now. After I I was initially you know used to be very pissed off about this, but uh, but but right now I I I sort of understand why this happens, and this is a very big misconception among students I've seen, even because, because it, it was one of my biggest misconceptions. So ha after having worked with like some of these people, especially like in overseas, I, I actually know how busy these people actually are. Like during a day, they have a, a lot to do. And we turns out have a lot of, you know, free time. And this is basically how it has been throughout as well. So yeah, they, they, and, and let me tell you a, a professor, a good professor or, or maybe a mediocre good professor in, in abroad would around get like 1000 meals. So every professor getting 1000 meals from 1000 students. Like per so day, I, I, 1000 per month. No, no, no. So that depends, I guess, but like, just imagine like 1000 meals from 1000 students asking like how him or her to take you under his or her supervision. That's, that's insane. Insane. So yeah, that's, that's pretty less. That's pretty less. So, uh, how many people get through? I mean, I, I know some people who have gone through that's if that answers your question, but yeah, the number is very less. And also I would like to say something very important here. It doesn't matter like if you get through or not, if you are not able to like uh, produce quality work and uh, you know, like use your internship to actually make something that you can show for, because that's what's very important in like research because uh, in corporate, I think the experience as a whole is what is considered for the probably the next job that you'll apply for. Mm. But in research, you'll have to like show tangible work that you have done in order to yeah. produce, uh, increase your credibility and, you know, probably uh, apply to higher positions. Okay. Got it. Got yeah. It. So uh, coming to internships, you have done a number of internships abroad rather than in India. So was this a th thought out action or did this happen just like that? And also, like, what is the quality no, of I mean, internships done abroad and yeah. in India? If you could speak on that aspect. Right. So, I mean, uh, the the 
I, I first started with the research internship at IIT Bombay last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the coronavirus struck and we had to work remotely. So that's that's when it started. So I, I started like understanding uh, the the field in a much more matured way and in a much more deeper way. So that's that's when my interest part and simultaneously I had this habit of always looking for professors and searching for professors who are also interested in the same field because by the time I was doing my research internship at IIT Bombay, I was almost certain that this is probably going to be my uh, way ahead or maybe I was like treating it as an option back then. This so that's, in, that's, this was the semester right after anyway. the second year or third yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second year or yeah. third year? No, uh, thir- yeah, probably third year. Yeah, 2020, third year. Third Correct. Year. So, yeah, so I was treating it as a very like strong potential, you know, option for the future. So that's, that's when I started looking for professors and then you, then you understand the process. It's, 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 it's not like a written process. It's an unwritten process. Mm-hmm. Nobody really talks about it. It's, it's, it's just a very basic process where you have to just, you know, just do a lot of Googling and uh, you have to go through a lot of papers and see like which professor in which particular university is working in your field of interest. Mm-hmm. And if your subfield matches with that professor's subfield as well, then you are a very strong potential candidate for him to take in because it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, if you can, you know, somehow convince him or her to, you know, like take you in based on something else that you have done, that also works. But these are like some of the strategies that you use in, in terms of, uh, you know, how to get through. Uh, but now coming to the other part of the question where you talked about the quality, I mean, of course, uh, I think talk, talking about like professors abroad, they have a lot more facilities available to them. It's, it's, it's not a secret. And also, I think I believe that they have a lot of a, a very well-defined territory of research that they do. For example, I have worked with a professor who just primarily like produces papers on just one kind of data set. So that's that's how well defined, you know. So it's it's so research is like a very big tree, right? So there are branches and there are sub branches. You can like pick right. anyone and make it your own. And yeah, that, that, and some other professors, especially older and more experienced professors, you will find will have very, very broad areas of research. They probably, you know, do everything. Uh, so that's, that's there. So, yeah, I mean, the quality, there's obviously a difference and there's obviously the outcome we see in these uh, statistics of these top tier conferences as well, because uh, USA and China are like way ahead of us with regards to the number of published papers that they have in these conferences and it shows and it shows with the quality of research as well. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's so, what uh, So this was a thought out action for you to get more research yeah, definitely, abroad definitely. Rather than in India. Just because it, it that... can't happen by chance. I mean, uh. <laughs> somebody will not just knock on your door and <laughs> no, but the, you, have, you have applied at companies. Uh, it's a foreign, very, very hard process. Uh, you have applied at foreign in, uh, research internships more than you have applied at Indian ones. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that is definitely. Like, we obviously can't just depend on foreign internships like wholly. Foreign made no, or... definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not. It's, uh. it's, it's all chance. It's, it's all chance. I think you just have to apply everywhere. Hmm. and just see whoever like takes you in i think that was my method i mean my mantra was like apply karne mein kya jata hai. doesn't matter right what is the what is your worst case scenario not getting a reply who cares yeah. <laughs> nice. there are 100 other professors i can make. yeah <laughs> i mean you just need one guy yeah. to take your one exactly. you know like professor to take you so that's that's exactly. what it is this is an yeah. advice I actually give to many people when they tell me that uh, job lag raha, itna jaga apply kar liya. Like, you just you just need one acceptance, just one. Yeah. You, places, you don't need it's... ten acceptances. Yeah. You just need one. So just keep on right. applying. Okay. So this you is, talked this about is the most, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you talked about the process of so getting research intensive. So can you please tell me like the entire process, like how to like the mails, what all do you need for a research internships uh, in India as well as abroad? And how did you go about it? Like 
what was the first requirement when you got into iit bombay then the broad ones like the cover letter the projects that you had right no so i think for me the case was a little different from probably somebody else or most people mm. so i think uh, before iit bombay i was already working on small little pet projects where mm. i was applying these deep learning tools that i was learning every day and i was using it to build systems and i was also using it to have a front end part of it as well so that it mm. can be used as a web application. web application so i was building these interesting projects and so i randomly just happened to apply to this annual conference of python software foundation that happens called pycon usa mm. 2019 uh, it was it it happened in cleveland in mm. that year so uh, yeah so my uh, project got selected and i got a full paid yeah trip to there and back and so that experience actually had a lot of impact on me because i sort of networked with some google employees as well they uh, saw the projects and they told me that apparently the tensorflow research team was already working on a similar project on uh, retinopathy detection from from retinal images and i'm talking about 2018 i think so mm. that uh, 2019 i think yeah early 2019 so mm. that's 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 where there was a overlap as well so i i technically got a lot of uh, new ideas and directions that i could possibly go in i mean that that happens i mean you you interact with somebody you get to know how things are how things are done in in that particular uh, place so my first realization was google is just another company there and there were like so many offices so many. there and it's yeah. not a big deal not a big deal like not 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 as big a deal as it probably is here that let me rephrase that so that's that mm. is that but in in my case so that experience uh were counted a lot and i i further explored and explored and explored so then after in 2020 before the pandemic struck i applied to this professor at iit bombay and then from that my journey started um now coming to the application part, it's I think pretty standard and already known to a lot of people. I think this mm-hmm. is the most, you know, like uh, uh, you know, connected, uh, you know, area of talk that 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 will probably find. So, I think uh, the first thing is a cover letter. The uh, first thing obviously is a resume where where mm-hmm. if you are applying for a recent in- internship, uh, I would suggest you to highlight your uh well defined research areas i think that's that's i think the most important and it goes right on the top so that the professor can you know right away see at the very far first glance what are your areas mm-hmm. next you probably will show your education or probably above that and then you have your publications and your projects and then you have your uh research experiences if you've had uh the conferences and talks that you've attended, any academic responsibilities or not, skills, etc. Um, then you have a cover letter where you probably will talk about the uh, the cover letter. I I treated the cover letter as the body of the email, so mm-hmm. I did not like send another cover letter, but up to you. Yeah. But yeah, then you basically talk about like your research interests and which papers of mm-hmm. the professors you have read and liked, and why would you want him to hire you as you know whatever whatever in their lab so that's like pretty standard um okay, apart so, from that uh-huh, i think like, you could also uh-huh. send transcripts okay. if that helps okay transcripts so if you could answer this in the terms of a uh, say a first year or second year student who is very enthusiastic about research but he does not know a thing about research like how to get in how to get yeah. it basically how to get his first research opportunity first research right. so how how should he begin with what should he begin with so i think i th- i think it's 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 pretty like easy i mean you don't have to do a lot right so a lot of messages i get with regards to this very question is uh with in line to you know enthusiastic second year or first year engineering students mm-hmm. have just done that andrew ng course on coursera yeah. and they're just you know ready to conquer the world yeah, but it, it actually doesn't <laughs> happen like that and i know this person because i was the same guy but i mean yeah so 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 
yeah i mean it, it you have to go a lot deeper in order to like first f- find what you like because deep learning it's it's huge it's huge it's so much and it's still expanding as we having this podcast so mm-hmm. that's 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 that um but however what i would suggest anybody to do who's interested or at any point in their life if they're just just out of curiosity interested or just you know like fascinated by what 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 what's going on um just take up any landmark research paper and it it doesn't take a supervisor it doesn't take anybody just like open it download the pdf or just i i do something right i i have a very naive approach to research till now i do not know what to do or what these professors does but when i am asked to find an idea what i do is i just go to these cvpr websites and on some editions i'll just scroll through the accepted papers i'll first shortlist them on the basis of the title and how much of my liking they are or interest they are then i'll open those papers and then i'll further shortlist based on my mood and then i will shortlist to just probably two or three i'll read those and then i will try to find problems and probably loopholes in those papers and that is how you get idea for your paper so that's that's like a elaborate process of how the research pedagogy works for me at least um so yeah i mean that's that's how it is so first you need to develop a area of interest and then you mail the professor who's also probably working in the same field and yeah if there's an overlap and if you you know sort of surpass the criteria the con- co- the concerned professor has or probably an interview or such then after that you are through and you will probably uh, be called to join the lab okay got it so this is also a question pertaining to specifically to data science so how can what are the various resources that one should go through while getting their first research internships like you said andrew ng and the next course would obviously be the dl specialization so yeah that is the end range i'm talking about the old one is very old like they do programming in octave and that's that's uh, obsolete now. okay you are you're talking about the five courses whole specialization only yeah yeah so so that that's like the new andrew ng uh, the, the modern new NG revised NG. andrew ng course yeah <laughs> okay yeah. got it so what after that because i have seen people just do the yeah. andrew ng older course and talk about okay i'm ready for machine learning i want to do machine learning now yeah i know i know. <laughs> so, so so i think uh, uh if you ask me if what i did was i i found the platform kaggle to be very 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 helpful personally because uh learning for courser i mean it's fine you are watching videos you are doing assignments and it's a very good like course as well not to mm-hmm. not to like mislead anybody it's a very very good course but right after that i think i was craving something which would be hands on mm-hmm. right so i think kaggle was the very very you know suitable platform for that i started like for participating in different competitions that used to happen over the year like all over the year and i think there are some really really interesting data sets and so it's a platform where all data scientists sort of you know come and they also like post their notebooks as well so if you are let's say dealing with a very new kind of data and you have literally no idea about what the data is or what it signifies or anything about it so what you can do is you can open any of these exploratory notebooks and you can mm. like check you know like if 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 these person have already derived some insights which you can put to use and further your problem statement so that's that's the idea so uh, kaggle is a very very good resource i would say apart from that i think just be on a constant search for really cool interesting projects um it doesn't really matter at that particular stage that you are talking about if you are doing something novel but it does matter if you are doing something that would make you stand out as in not the very basic projects that you know like probably is done yes, or like probably they make you do anywhere um so i i i'd suggest like don't do that uh, just just like find projects there are so many projects available honestly there are so many you know very very good github repositories as well mm. which are available which which has a very very good collection of these data science projects that you talk about those are those are like some of the very best resources 
And one more thing that I would definitely like to add here, and I would like take this platform as an opportunity to do this. I am requesting everybody like on behalf of just, just as a student or a senior or a junior, please never ever pay anybody to learn data science. There's literally so many resources available. And mm -hmm. if you like pay somebody to data science, it doesn't really make sense because they make you do the same things. Mm -hmm. And I'm really against this because I mean, I, I, I don't really see the point. I have never subscribed to that idea. So. Okay, got it. Like this is something that I agree or agree to because like in 2021, especially in the, the is this super modern era of internet, yeah. everything is out there, everything. Literally yeah, everything. and everybody should be able to use the internet. Mm. Otherwise, they are just living under a rock and it doesn't really make sense. I mean, no. <laughs> Paying somebody to learn a skill right now. Let's get on to the next question. So can you give some tips for writing a cover letter or, and also for writing your CV when applying for research internship, especially from the perspective of students studying in private colleges in IIT, in, it's not yeah, in IIT. I mean, IIT. Yeah, so I mean, you are the best judge of which is your strongest weapon and which is your weakest, you mm -hmm. know, vulnerability. So, I mean, strongest vulnerability. So anyway. Uh, but I think, yeah, so I think you are the best judge of your profile. So that, that completely depends on how you will uh, place your profile or how we will organize your profile. So, but, but for me, I think uh, I believe in, I, I, I think you should only show something which you should at, 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 at to, in order to like cross a particular hurdle. So, I mean, it doesn't really make sense to like show a lot of things which are irrelevant to the position that you're applying for it, it it doesn't make sense for you it doesn't make sense for your recruiter so that's mm. that's not what's my uh, i you know advice would be but for me i think uh if you are from a stellar institution definitely highlight that i mean why wouldn't you but if you're not and if your university is not as well known in the research world as probably some other I mean, the first thing you should do is obviously try to gain enough credibility in order to qualify for uh, internships abroad where you are able to conduct research and able to highlight the fact that you have worked at these places even while not belonging to probably the same university, but you have, you have definitely worked and there are proofs of that. So that's, that's definitely important. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I think you could also um, highlight on some of the really interesting projects, maybe two or three in depth uh, that you have done. If you do not have publications, if you do have publications, definitely write those publications because I think those are areas where the professors judges your profile, like literally judges your profile. Like if you have, you know, what, what, why, why should he or she hire you? So mm -hmm. those are the reasons why they should so technically practically that's that's i believe that that's what it is um apart from that i think cover letter you have a normal flow you first introduce yourself you introduce your interests you um introduce your experience with regards to whatever, whatever you are willing to highlight two three whatever your way of writing there are no fixed formats, so to say, for me, there never was. I still uh, edit my cover letter every time I write a new mail because that's, that's you know, legitimately how it should be, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, because it, 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 yeah, because otherwise your cover letter is mo most likely go to your professor's spam folder mm -hmm. if it's a generic mail because you have to customize it in, 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 in order to make sure like he or she notices your mail or your purpose is served. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, so you pro have to just mention some of your research interests, research experiences, um, why his or her lab interests you, um, which work specifically probably has, uh, you know, got you thinking or probably you have a possible direction for that particular work that you would want to discuss. And yeah, lastly, you say that, you know, like if you are willing to, you know, take me in i would be very interested in order to gain more experience etc cetera, etc cetera. that's that's basically the process and the standard procedure is 
an interview after this so you'll have to clear that i mean i do not know what they will ask you but it, that there's no like generic interview advice because it mm. largely depends on your professor and it's not a standard interview hiring process as well okay got it got it now let's get on to your experience as like as a research assistant at cmu because cmu is considered one of the like best universities to study at and you did a re- and you did a research internship there so how was the experience there how was the, how was the professors there how was the other students obviously it was remote so you couldn't go there but still how yeah. was the experience in terms of being remote as well it was great it was great man i mean obviously i mean it's it's one of the best in research and you know like the kind of uh, the kind of work that happens and the kind of research output it produces it produces every year so yeah my experience was good i mean i was working on a very particular type of data and we were trying to detect mm. macromolecules from 3d slices of data mm. the data was i think called cryoelectron tomograms so yeah that was basically what we were trying to do we were trying to do object detection ha huh? heavy words <laughs> heavy words <laughs> so na so we were trying to do object detection and yeah i mean then uh, we were tra- so so yeah there were a few challenges that we faced blah 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 um but yeah it was great the other students were pretty smart that's the first take i had i mean everybody was so smart um oh, and man. i mean that's <laughs> insane and everybody like was super hard work hard working as well it was a little tiring for me because i was having very very you know massive problems with the time zone difference as in i you know so so basically what would happen is i would finish my college work and 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 it ended up my doing my college work throughout the day and at the night i had to start with the lab work and that used to be pretty pretty exhausting um and uh, yeah i mean other than that it was cool i mean firstly it did not like was much of a problem because i uh, thought that i'm a college student i wouldn't you know probably i don't need to have so many issues i can do that <laughs> yeah. i don't need but sleep. yeah eventually i saw a decline in my productivity after like staying up 16 plus hours mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. and that that doesn't work well but yeah i mean other than that the quality of research is unparalleled i mean if you are if you are able to get into cmu or get a research position at cmu definitely consider doing it because it's 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 just insane what kind of work that goes on on the other side of the world there and with with just regards to science and research i mean wow okay very 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 astonishing okay got it got it so now that we have talked about a research internship so can you please tell us like what are your future pl- future plans right now like what do you plan to do in the future phd ms abroad yeah. in india what are you planning <laughs> i mean i do not know <laughs> right now i'm 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 absolutely not sure everything is a very very blurred path right now especially because of the times that we are living in right now mm. so if you had in all seriousness i mean if you had asked me this very question 3 months back my answer would have been very 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 different but right now i mean uh i think i will continue doing research independently for for some time at least till the fall 2022 admissions and then i'll probably look for higher studies i have no idea what i'll ultimately end up doing but i do wish to explore more into my area and you know gain enough credibility in order to uh you know establish something of my own uh through my you know knowledge or through my technical know hows or my you know experience in this field and obviously give back to the community hmm. that's that's the point. okay awesome so so like this was a wonderful interview so can you please give us some final tips for the students out there who are looking to grab research internships but are unable to do so so some parting advice for them i mean go for it go for it i mean if you are 
so you have so i think this applies to anything at at, at after after level so if you are really really interested in something i think you should just end up doing it i mean mm. it doesn't matter i mean you 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 will probably so what so all, always like think what what would be the worst worst case scenario ultimately you will like end up looking back at this part of your life and thinking no what it was mistake but just understand this that you know like you will actually do this i mean hmm. it's it's not like you will think you know like what if i could have done that this actually do it especially i think in in your undergraduate journey you have a lot of free time hmm. um i mean you you do have a lot of free time at least for me i had a lot of free time so you have to be very smart about what you would want to do using those free times i mean there were times when there were parties happening all around my hostel and i was still there sending mails or you know learning some about some library of python at some corner in my room and that 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 were you know nights and these were not i am not a very super ser- serious student i mean these were not like occasional nights this was just random nights that random parties happened right, in my hostel right so so that's <laughs> that that's what it is uh but yeah i mean that's uh one of the few things that you can do develop a gradual interest one reiterating my previous uh, tip that was i mean definitely definitely try reading a research paper i mean it's a it's 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 not going to be reading i mean it's going to be an experience i mean you want to understand the very every nuts and bolts of a particular algorithm that an author has tried to you know propose mm. uh, but yeah like read good papers which are like landmark papers i mean because those are i think much more uh, readily understandable mm-hmm. there are notes available on research papers so refer to that if you do not understand what 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 is written in the paper itself or the language is uh, getting a little difficult for you so those notes are like simplified version or like there are annotated papers available as well where they like highlight and just explain that part so yeah these are like some of the additional resources that could help you keep going um other than that uh, final parting tip would be um find what you like i mean it 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 mm-hmm. might sound generic but uh you you do i cannot emphasize this enough but you do need to have if you are if you have crossed that andrew ng phase and if you are interested in doing research in in this area i mean you have to have a defined territory of research and it it needs to be it it doesn't need to be like very streamlined but it has to encompass a few areas mm-hmm. i mean there are so many directions you can go to you can go to computer vision you can go to probabilistic machine learning which which deals with the math part of you know these algorithms or uh conjectures or you could go to pure uh you know stats as well from this field so there are a lot of you know things that you can do or applied statistics as well uh but yeah uh, these are like some of the options and some of the areas that you can go forward to so yeah have a have a have a very clear defined area of interest and take time in order to decide your area of interest because i think once you commit i think you'll probably have to pursue that so take a good amount of time in order to decide what you are hmm. going to pursue that's that's important okay and also you mentioned some resources like like some github repositories some maybe even some kaggle competitions you talked about so if you could yeah, please yeah. send me those in whatsapp then i can link them in the description below yeah 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 so that definitely. people can refer to them Okay. Got it. No, so, no. I just randomly like cited this. So the Kaggle dot com, I think, is known to everybody. Mm, I think it's very course. popular. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'm gonna mona call this part here, though. Got it. So yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Deepam, for this interview. And I think people are going to love this entire podcast and the immense, immense amount of value that you have provided through this podcast. So thank you so much, Deepam, for coming here. And it has been an honor. Okay. Hopefully, we can do this again sometime if people really want Definitely. to see you again, and maybe we can do it Definitely. live on YouTube so that people can actually ask questions directly yeah. on YouTube. YouTube chat, you can answer them. So that would be fun.